I'm going to do this one, which is um, talking about deformity in children. And uh, I don't, some of them, are, some of them are sort of run into each other. I think it's so terribly important to talk about birth and sexuality. I've, I've got a lot to, to say about it in other things, but um, we'll start with this anyway. Right, it, they, they're calling it politically incorrect, the Down syndrome children and deformed children and the creation of mankind himself. There are manifold reasons for these distressing mistakes of nature and they happen even in animals for one reason or another. But in animals, they are not allowed to live and in the lowest, lowliest of humanity before civilization takes over, they are not allowed to live either. It is well known that parents or one parent of a Mongol child often has a deformity of the chromosome, or so we thought. I'm not so sure really now, but anyway. Um, a deformity of the chromosome, or one too many. that ca The causes are much more complicated and often impossible to understand than simply this. Let us first look at the creation of mankind himself, which is extremely complicated and begins with the simple... Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, Miles. All right, okay, well, I'll, I'll go on with this because it looks like I'm saying the same thing. Let us first look at the creation of mankind himself, which all, again is extremely complicated and begins with a simple amoeba and the growth of a living planet itself. All things begin with water and the formation of water, earth and rock and the tiny creatures which live in it and around these natural things. If nature makes a mistake, it does not remedy it. It destroys it and starts again. That is the basic premise of nature, and its very destruction can be terrifying. Now in the world you have computers, a fairly recent invention or discovery, and much more advanced electronics such as there have never been before. How could ancient mankind have come to know and understand that all things are designed, programmed, and improved upon from one lifetime to another in a completely computerized way, when they simply would not have understood what a computer was, or even electricity, which had hardly been put to use in Victorian times, even though there were many scientists of those times who were beginning to come to know and understand it. Children now play with computer games, watch television, and are sensible enough to understand by everything that is going on all around them how nature works and how mankind is created in the first place. Nature is seemingly wasteful. It creates a large number of all creatures, but selects from the higher intelligence which emerge from one creature to the next, only the very best, perhaps one in a million. The same applies when you get to humanity itself. In the intelligent, amazing little bee that is programmed to work and run its little colony in the most extraordinary way, only one of the thousand of drones that flies up in the sky to mate with the queen bee is clever enough or strong enough to reach her. He places his seed within her body before he dies of exhaustion, and all the other drones dry, dry, <coughs> sorry, die without ever having mated at all. Seemingly cruel, but it's nature's way of ensuring that all the very best survive, and in that way, a stronger, better insect or animal goes on to live and mate and produce altogether better species than could otherwise be the case. Nowadays, television is watched in all the richer Western nations, and nature programs of great complexity show even children how creatures grow and develop and seem always to be devoured by yet another, even larger, more fearsome, fearsome number of animal, fearsome member of the animal kingdom. Many people, disgusted by the way in which nature works, refuse to eat either fish or fowl and turn their backs on creation altogether. Terrible world, they say with a shudder. However, everyone in this world and life has to go on, and it's better to accept the truth and go along with it with humility and grace than try to fight it and die yourself in the process. If creatures were not programmed to devour everything in sight, you would have pathetic old instinct, insects, old animals creeping around and dying of awful, painful starvation, not to mention leaving their dreadful, putrid, decaying bodies to foul up the world and destroy everything else with germs and filth. It is in the long run the only way. Later we shall speak of reincarnation, but let us say here and now that reincarnation is true for all creatures and is also true for mankind. Buddhists and other religions of the East believe that a person of great intelligence might retain in another lifetime, return in life, another lifetime as a fly or a bird. This is ridiculous. 
The truth is that it takes possibly two or even three million years to create an intelligent human being, starting with a simple amoebic life form that dividing and subdividing grows. As life dies in the physical body, so the entity or soul of that tiny microbe, all the things grow and develop on two structures at once, as we have already mentioned, and it's placed in yet another similar body, and, yet, and so it will go on and on, growing and developing, until it is considered or computed for it to be progressed to something just a tiny bit more complicated, which seems to have the intelligence to cope with. Every creature that exists must work constantly to feed itself. This means it must kill its prey. In the simple insect, it must calculate either how to ensnare it and sting or lay in wait and kill it by stinging. Such a death is usually instantaneous. But it is by this means that the intellect gradually sharpens and calculating powers improve. And it means that in the humanity that comes eventually from lowlier creatures of all forms, there is always that violence which has created him in the very first place, most especially in the male, who in primitive man must often also ensnare animals simply to live and calculate how to protect his family from harm. Let it also be remembered that all creatures, most especially those that become human eventually, that they live in groups, and this is the only way that they can be safe from harm, and that they are ever truly happy. Human beings are mainly the same also. Even at the highest level, they come to the highest form of happiness within their own family, their own people. For a simple understanding of all the creatures of the earth, let it be understood that birds never progress very much. Even though, even though they do have some sort of intelligence, but they are not progressing creatures. Insects of the stinging kind do eventually become one or another sort of animal, and in the end one comes to the ape, and all humanity begins with a simple monkey or ape type or creature, before it does attain the intelligence to become human. I think in another dictation, they said that sometimes the entities of some birds are actually included in the sort of... Um, in the body of a human being to act as messengers within the body. So humanity is always, you can actually see with the, um, the tiny insect that has just a very simple body with a minute brain and huge eyes and then gradually you can see the brain forming. And once you get to a male and a female of each creature, then the um, another each, the, each parent gives another layer of brain cells, if you like, to the forming, in, uh, the forming tiny creature. And its brain grows each time. And then the, the head grows and the eyes become smaller. And this is the same with us. You find that our heads are much bigger and we are bigger also. Let it also be remembered that all creatures, most especially those that become human, eventually that they live in groups and that this is the only way that they can be safe from harm, and that they are ever truly happy. Human beings are mainly the same also. Even at the highest level, they come to the highest form of happiness with their own family and their own people. For a simple understanding of all the creatures of the earth, let it be understood, oh, that, I've said this already. Anyway, that birds never progress very much, even though, even when they have quite some sort of intelligence, but they are not a progressing creature. Insects of the stinging kind do eventually become one or another sort of an animal, and in the end one comes to the ape. All the humanity becomes, begins with a simple monkey or ape type of creature before it does attain the intelligence to become human. People of today cannot accept that human beings are not all the same, that whatever colour they are, they are equal in ability to govern themselves. This is not so today, and never was the plan that it should be so. In the very beginning, you must have the very darkest types of black man, and he comes in very many forms. You have the long, thin type of face and the taller in physique. You have the pygmy, often very intelligent but small of stature. You have high cheekboned mankind, low cheekbones, square jawed, and all sorts and types of mankind. In the beginning, they must be black or yellow, the oriental types of mankind, who in the very beginning is always set to work with his domesticated animals 
to plant the earth and to live simply and quietly growing his crops and living in contentment with his own family group. This is the Chinese type of person. In the black and brown man who elevates from the black man in the beginning, you have more of the nomadic types of humanity who is not clever in growing crops, is restless and prefers to ruin the wild wilderness and plains of the earth. All mankind must have a leader. All groups of animals have the lead male, fierce and wild, constantly challenged by the younger males. Until in old age he does not moulder away as human beings do today, he is killed by another younger, stronger male in mortal combat for leadership of the group. Anyone can look back into history in this country of England where this book has been written. Everybody knows how there has been a tremendous mixture of all races since before time was recorded. There is a great deal more that must be said about race, about colour and types of humanity. But in this dictation, let us just look at as, as simply as possible at the creation of man, which, as Darwin realised, comes from the animal kingdom in the first place. There is not a living human being who does not know and understand what it would be to feel like to be hunted, caught and killed by a predator. Not because he or she has ever experienced such a thing in his or her present lifetime, but because without doubt such a thing has happened without t in, in, time, in time without number, in millions upon millions of lifetimes, in the long process of evolution. In every race you have the same types of mankind, relating to the various types of animal and monkey which he sprang from in the first place. This is the way humanity is created, which explains that all human beings, of whatever colour or type they might be, is a very complicated mixture of, a very many, of very many things, which has taken a very long time to create. Never would it be possible for such a complex, intelligent creature as mankind to return as a simple fly or bee or bird, as some of the Eastern religions maintain. That this humanity has had precious little instruction whatsoever in the past several thousand years is a fact. But it is interesting to look at the simple instruction that has come down in the Christian Bible, both in the Old and the New Testament, instructions as to whom mankind should or should not marry, what he should or should not eat. These guidelines are very nebulous and few, and now it is time that humanity realise why care should be taken not only in what he should eat, but in whom he should marry or mate with, to put it in the simplest possible terms. What the reader might ask has all this about the creation of mankind to do with the malformed humanity, more and more of which now seems to be the case. The answer is simple, because far too few people, even doctors themselves, really realise just how complicated the creation of man is, or even an animal, and it is amazing that nature does not slip up more often in the continual business of birth when it comes to the more intelligent and even the least intelligent. Not only must doctors realise that the process of birth takes place once, not once, but many times, over and over again, and there are manifold reasons why things go awry in the complex hum human history. Every day one reads somewhere of a suicide, a dreadful accident, a terrible tragedy, and the appalling effect and the sorrow this has had upon someone near and dear to the death of a loved one. What happens in life has its psychological effect, not in one lifetime, but in many. A scar is formed, not one that can be seen, but in the character continually forming and reforming of whoever the sufferer might have been. In all the information that we shall give in this book, we hope to give guidelines that will help to make life for future generations far, far happier, which will mean that there will be far fewer people suffering from unmentionable fears, terror of nothing in particular, nightmares, not only in childhood but throughout life, and also these malformed births of all kinds and sorts. Firstly, let us look at physical malformation. Lack of a limb or twisted limb, cerebral palsy or spastic children. For these, one must look at the sorts of people who quite gaily rush off and marry each other without a thought for the sorts of children they might produce. Not so very long ago, women all too often died in childbed, as it was called in England and Europe and America, before obstetrics became as skilled as they are today. It was quite common to marry several women and lose them all before at least one last managed to bring a child to full term and healthy. 
Herds of animals who mate together and are all structured in the same way and look similar do not ever have difficulty in producing their young because the formation of their skeletal frame and the electrical way in which their bodies work is all much the same. This applies to all animals and even to man himself. It has been seen that although a simple ape gives birth with ease in her natural habitat, once she has mated with one of her own clan, the moment she is placed in a zoo and mated with some other ape from another part of the world, she often loses the infant or has to have obstetric help to bring the child into the world. The same thing has been going on with human beings for centuries and centuries. There are several things that modern doctors must look at in the future. The different electrical patterns of the brain, which now have the means to examine, not to mention the different types of blood groups which are, which are interrelated. We now have more than 50 different blood groups. It will be discovered that with the use of various electrical apparatus, not only with different patterns show up on a screen once electrodes of the right sort are placed on either side of the brain, but all the brains emit the minutest sound which can be picked up quite easily in various ways. Expert medical technicians will know what we are talking about, as the writer is not an expert on these things. There are some nine or ten different types of brain type, and possibly more than this. If people of totally different brain type marry each other, they run the risk not only of falling out with each other after a few years, but of producing children who, if not Mongols or spastics, may be rather less intelligent than their parents. You have also structure. Tall people should marry each other, but how often a very tall person marries someone else who is minute by comparison. Colouring also is important. Like with like is always best in the end. Rules for this will be given in another dictation, because in the future, if these instructions are read and adhered to as far as possible, a much healthier, cleverer and happier humanity will rise up within the next 200 years, and no planet is better than the people who exist within it. For health in the future, careful thought must be given to the colour, structure and the intricate way in which all bodies, human and animal, are electrically powered. One cause of Mongolism among many is the terrible and dreadful business of rape within a family, where a child is born to a girl, the father of which is either or a brother, is either the father or the brother. These things go on happening even in this day and age. Such disgrace is always kept secret, and the child born brought up within the family and passed off as something else. Well, the secret, although the secret will be kept, and the child apparently normal, these people will pass on possibly the possibility of an extra chromosome or means of a Mongol offspring in a future generation of that family. As it says in the Bible, the sins of the father shall be cast upon the second and third generation, and one cannot help but wonder if this is something of what is meant by this. Only if these facts are put more clearly can humanity understand the meaning of these ambiguous words. The other, um, the other reason for um, Down syndrome also it's believed that in Victorian times, as many as 10%, one in 10 people, had some form of syphilis. And we had no ability to heal it except for um, mercury, which was no good either. So you found that children often were very deformed from, from this. You know, a child could be infected after... The, you know, when the mother was, was suffering from tertiary syphilis. Or um, somebody who has suffered with tertiary syphilis can come back with Down syndrome. These sexual plagues, have, are, I will talk about in another dictation, and are very serious and affect the, um, and affect the entity very, very seriously. And only very clever people on the other side can do something about it. With structure, you have other problems. A very small woman trying to give birth to a child by a very tall man may have no trouble, but the skeletal frame of the child may be distorted in all manner of ways. The child may be too big for her pelvic cavity, and we think that, that not enough care is given in measuring the pelvic cavity of a young woman who wishes to bring healthy children into the world. It's better to be forewarned before having children, and many women would experience less... Um, Wait a minute, many women would experience less children if some work was done in the, well, less problem. 
if some work was done in this direction. I mean, sometimes a woman goes through an incredibly long labour only to find that the child has to be given a, um, a caesarean and the doctors haven't worked out that their mother couldn't give birth to the child anyway. Without doubt, many children are born with brain damage because the child has an entirely different type of electrical um, power being to its mother in that the child in the birth canal is moving in an entirely different way to the woman who's trying to give birth. This often causes damage and you have a dead or severely injured child born with the cord wrapped around its neck or badly bruised in the head. Some children are strong enough to get through these difficult births, but all too many children are not so strong and do not. The writer who has had three, this is my mother, comparatively easy births to girl children and without doubt girls because they are more passive in movement even before birth and smaller in the head are easier to bring into the world. Read the book by Dick Grantley Reed, Childbirth Without Fear. He claimed that women in the civilized world were so afraid of natural things and so ignorant of the process of birth that they made things altogether too difficult for themselves whereas their simple counterparts either i.e. the humblest poor peasant woman or black woman, could give birth very easily and even lie down or stoop down, give birth all alone, dispose of the afterbirth, bite off the tube, tie the neck and wrap the infant in her clothing, hoist it up on her back and never need even to rest. All true, but what this very far-sighted and deep-thinking man did not realise was the effects which multiracial births on all structures and brain types has already had in your world. England, surrounded as it is by sea and inviolate in the past, has a purer race of people, especially in the north, where populations have moved little. But the further south you travel, the more different types of people there are. Europe has had a tremendous movement of people, and America has the greatest numbers of multiracial problems of any other country on the earth. All of these things have had their effect. In another dictation, we shall speak about happy marriage of the future. Right, so that's that, and um, but I've already mentioned about um, the problems that um, rhesus negative blood has given us. So that is another thing. Um, there is a little dictation here about um, Down syndrome children. They call them Mongol children. This is written in 1976. This is too complicated a matter to dictate even to someone other than yourself who has a thoroughly comprehensive knowledge, both medical and scientific, as far as knowledge has progressed in your planet. I don't know who this was written to. It wasn't my mother. It is known that the human gene and chromosomes have a direct bearing on the formation of such child children, and that families who have a history of such births would appear to be deficient in only one chromosome. It is also known that people of advanced age often produce such children. These are the physical known facts. There are, however, spiritual factors too complicated for human understanding. The only simple explanation that be can be given is that all physical things have exact, their exact parallel corresponding spiritual equivalence. These Mongol children often live only a short term, a very loving, musical, and bring joy to to, uh, to um, and bring joy of a kind to their parents. None of these children should be denied love as it will help them to progress spiritually to higher planes, both physically and spiritually. Some such as these, made male but by no means all, are reincarnations of those throughout the several physical lives have proved themselves intensely evil. I don't think you can always say that. Whatever gifts they have possessed, taken from them, are left in this condition and must remain so until they are given another chance to live normal lives and progress in love and understanding. All these children need to be loved by their families and not cast away in homes bereft of companionship and family. If they can learn some simple skill, then so much the better, for all that this is not often so. None of these children should be deliberately destroyed at birth, but given their chance of progression in life, no mother who has had such a child should feel ashamed of it, but rather that she has been given a difficult and often rewarding task in the success of which she will feel the greater blessed. I, th I think that is a hard thing for anybody to read who has a, a child who has Down syndrome. However, Down syndrome can affect children in varying different ways and as I've just said sometimes it can be to do with having 
you know, got syphilis, but then syphilis is no respecter of um, any sort of family class. It has gone through Europe everywhere. And these days, these children are very often destroyed in Europe, Euro, utero, um, at about 18 weeks, which I will go on to read another bit about abortion and how this so damages the entity of these children that it is just unbelievable. So um, I think we should we should realise that, you know, we have to pay for everything we've done, really. All young women desirous of becoming mothers should realise from an early age the importance of radiant health. An unhealthy mother all too often produces unhealthy or malformed children. But of course, this is not always so. All young women should have an extensive x-ray taken from all the important angles of the hip cavity each year. These should be examined for any obvious signs of alteration or arthritic conditions, which can com commence at a fairly early age, particularly from having a very acid diet. And a lot of us these days eat vast amounts of fruit and salad and have very little in the way of um, alkaline foods. Any malformation of the hip can cause equal pressures on the brain centres of the forming child and a spastic or deformed baby will result. The medical profession is on the verge of learning a great deal more in this connection, the skills of which will enable them to minimise these malformed or deformed, deformed births. Mothers should remember to take sufficient rest also, not stand for long periods in awkward positions. Short, regular walks in the fresh air are most beneficial and a healthy, nourishing diet devoid entirely of white sugar. All these things help mothers to bring an unborn infant healthily into the world. The decompression bags placed over pregnant women are also beneficial, and it must be hoped that such procedures will come into practice all over the civilised world to help mothers to produce healthy children. Right, that's that done, Miles, and I'm going to do... Um, Sexuality of Mankind.